blessing today. The major world religions have a golden rule in their teachings. We need to stop looking for differences and find common ground. One of the beautiful teachings of the Dalai Lama, something he says pretty regularly is, my religion is kindness. When we hear that, it resonates because it points to something at the core of all spiritual in humanistic paths to peace and love. Gandhi, who was of the Hindu faith, was a guiding light to Dr. King. Nonviolence meaning means agreeing that you won't physically attack your enemy. And Gandhi referred to his form of nonviolence means, which means truth, force, and love force. The Native Americans creator created us all equal and as one. He gave us many teachings and all those teachings were the teachings of the seven grandfathers. And the seven grandfathers gave us teachings which Native American and, and all indigenous people should live by and to love by and to have peace by with one another in our community because we are all one. We are all one with Mother Earth. And I wanna share two or three of these teachings of the seven grandfathers. The teachings of truth. The teaching on truth allows you to believe that a power greater than yourselves can restore us to being the complete person we were created and meant to become. Respect. The teachings of respect will include learning of treating those around you the way you would want to be treated. And the respect does not allow you to be harmful to yourself and to others. As if you harm yourself, you are harming also yourself and the entire community. You are part of the community. You are whole. You belong to the community. Everybody is important. And one of my favorite teachers of the grandfathers is love. Only love can conquer hate. And love can be found in the core of all teachings. It is the most important and focusing on having peace within yourself, balance in life, acceptance of all things, and graciousness with the creator and one another. When we talk about love, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was love. He was love in action. And I ask you today, how will you be in love in action? How will you find peace? How will you find truth and love and make a difference in the world? Well, I wanna tell you one thing. My friend Eric Scott, singer-songwriter from Washington, D.C., said it better. I challenge you that there is no more waiting on the sidelines for someone to tell you to say go. Today, you are all not part of the audience. You are part of the show. You are the most important part of the show. So I ask you now, as I call on my ancestors and my elders, that we all take a deep breath and center yourselves as I give 
the final blessings. O oh, great spirit who dwells in the sky, lead us to the path of peace and understanding. Let all of us live together as brothers and sisters. Our lives are so short here, walking upon Mother Earth's surface. Let us open our eyes to all the blessings that you have given us. Please hear our prayers today, O oh Great Spirit, as we try to become love in action to bring about peace and love in the world. Aho. Welcome to the 2024 Montgomery County Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Birthday Tribute and Celebration. Where do we go from here? We choose. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise if you are able for the presentation of the colors by the Montgomery County Public Safety Honor Guard and the singing of the national anthem. And following, please remain standing for the Negro National Anthem. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight 
Life's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the night That our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave O'er the land of the free And the home of the brave Lift every voice and sing Till earth and heaven ring Ring with the harmonies of liberty Let our rejoicing rise high as the list sky, let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. Stony the road we trod, bitter the chastening rod, felt in the days when hope unborn had died. Yet with a steady beat, have not our weary feet come to the place for which our Father sighed. We have come over a way with that tears has been watered. We have come treading our path through the blood of the slaughtered. Out from the gloomy past till now we stand at last where the white gleam of our bright star is cast. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, Thou who has brought us thus far on the way. God, who has by thy might led us into the light, 
keep us forever in the path we pray. Lest our feet stray from the places, our God, where we met thee, our hearts drunk, for with the wine of the world we forget thee, shadowed beneath thy hand, may we forever stand. True to our God, true to our native land. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Jim Stowe, Director of the Office of Human Rights. Welcome, everyone. Somebody's out there, right? Is this on? Is this on? Okay. We are delighted to have you here today to help us celebrate the birthday of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Uh, you should know that today is his actual birthday, January 15th. So happy birthday, Dr. King. Our theme this year is, as you've heard, where do we go from here? We choose. This afternoon, we shall share with you ways that we wanted to suggest to you that might move our community forward despite all the challenges that we are experiencing today and may experience tomorrow. My friends, we have choices and we are not bound to live an existence locked into a reality that we cannot change. We have choices. We will need, however, Everybody, every single one, working it out in the Montgomery County way. So my friends, to start off this evening, uh, to share a few words of affirmation and statements of these choices I'm talking about, I am so pleased to have come to the stage our county executive, Mark Elrich, and our county council president, Andrew Friedson. Please welcome them both. So thank you all who slogged your way through the blizzard to get here tonight, or this afternoon. Um, I don't think any of us expected this today. So welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to our 29th annual Dr. Martin Luther King holiday celebration and commemoration. And this event poses the question of where do we go and answers it with the we choose. And I guess our task is to decide what it is we choose. It's an existential question that causes us to assess where we are in the struggle for justice in the face of strong and violent headwinds that arose against it. King said, but I refuse to accept the view that mankind is so tragically bound to the starless midnight of racism and war that the bright daybreak of peace and brotherhood can never become a reality. I believe that unarmed truth and unconditional love will have the final word. These words were shared by Dr. King at a time when society and the society he lived in had little or no opportunity for equal rights or inclusion, but rather an ironclad class of racism, bigotry, and segregation and unequal justice. It is time to discard the politics of incrementalism, of not pushing the cause of justice too hard for fear of offending, frankly, white people who get uncomfortable when you sound too bold. A people's freedom cannot forever be held hostage for the comfort level of people who consciously or unconsciously perpetuate the status quo of inequality. We
We've made progress in this county with our focus on excellence in the delivery of, service, of basic services for all our community and racial equity and social justice for all residents seeking quality of life that all of us desire. Yet even here, much of our black population occupies the lower rank, rungs of virtually every social determinant, the lower rungs of home ownership, of those who are rent burdened, of income in distribution, of access to community health and educational parity. So we have work to do, not just abroad, not just outside of Montgomery County. We have work to do here. So for me, the answer to where we go and what we choose is that we march together, work and struggle together in order to achieve the things that Dr. King so eloquently dreamed of. In short, we go forward to do the hard work that lies in front of us. Thank you very much. Like an unchecked cancer, hate corrodes the personality and eats away its vital unity. Hate destroys a man's sense of values and his objectivity. It causes him to describe the beautiful as ugly and the ugly as beautiful, and to confuse the true with the false and the false with the true. Good afternoon and welcome. I'm Andrew Friedson. I have the honor and privilege of serving as the council president. On behalf of all of my colleagues on the county council, I want to welcome you to Strathmore and to this year's celebration and observance of Martin Luther King Day. The words of Dr. King that I just mentioned illustrate what happens when hate prevails in communities. And that's why we stand together here in solidarity and in unity as a county and as a community that Montgomery County rejects hate in all of its forms. We have choices in our communities, as you heard from Jim Stowe earlier. We choose education and transformation, dignity and respect, peace and justice, community and inclusion. While we take this opportunity to reflect on how far we've come, we must also acknowledge how far we still have to go, as the county executive noted, and move resolutely forward towards a more hopeful future and towards the blessed community, the beloved community that Dr. King talked about. As we turn to some of the challenges that we have here in our own county and recognize that we are at a global inflection point, we're guided together by Dr. King and the struggle he fought and died for, embracing the fierce urgency of now that the time is always right to do what is right. We will remain steadfast in our efforts to keep our community safe and to make sure that we call out hate in all of its forms and that we continue the unfinished work together of Dr. King. Thank you very much. So Andrew and I are going to do something we re rehearse well when we go over to the council. We we're going to read a proclamation, alternating paragraphs. Whereas each year Montgomery County government honors the life and works and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and embraces the spirit and intent by designating the third Monday in January as an opportunity for the entire county to pause, reflect, and celebrate Dr. King's extraordinary ideals and. Whereas Dr. King championed civil and human rights for all people through nonviolence and collaboration amongst all people, regardless of their race, color, religion, education, economic or social status, and? Where do we go from here? We choose. The theme for this year's event focuses on choices in decision making and actions taken to improve the quality of life for our community, and? Whereas the choices, decisions, and actions we take today will not only impact our lives in the present moment, but the lives of our children and their future, and? Dr. King's ideals of transformation through the education, dignity, and respect, peace, and justice, and an inclusive community should be our guiding principles and ultimate goal. Now, therefore, be it resolved, Mark Elwich as County Executive and Andrew Friedson as Council President of Montgomery County, Maryland, proclaim January 15, 2024, as Dr. Martin Luther King Day, Martin, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day, 
In Montgomery County, we encourage all residents to remember and practice Dr. King's principles and teachings to find ways to impact the well-being of our community through our collective choices toward nonviolent social change and equality for all. Signed the 15th of January by myself and Andrew Friedson. Now it's my pleasure to introduce NAACP gold medal, gold medal winner Donovan Holt Harrington, accompanied on piano by Alma Sanford.
In contemplating what I could write that would bring honor to Dr. King's indelible marks of progress on our society, I concluded that using my words to continue the fight for justice in an area that impacts the future, our children would be best. So today I'll be reading an original poem called Heritage and Harmony. In life's com complex dance where truth is sought, how much are we shaped by merit and by what's passed down? Nature versus nurture, a profound reflection. It's never been this bad, mother says to father as she sighs, staring back at the flashing lights of our TV with sunken eyes, to those of Sandy Hook Elementary School, circling back to the people of Tulsa, whose tears and troubles have now been fossilized. From the serial killers of the 70s and 80s, to the mass shooters of our day and age, from the raping and pillage of our women to the massacre of our children, from the whips cracking on the backs of blacks to the echoing sobs of the children who shield from bullets or their backpacks, from the smoky and gray atmosphere on the dreaded day of 9-11 to the parents whose final wish is to join their child in heaven. Can we not say they're all one and the same? But the question then and today is who is to blame? This crucial query resounds through our world's congested streets in the sense that through the years we have been cycling through the same suggestions, like a clock's unwavering beats. Yet a festering wound persists, a question invaded, an ignorance cysts. The lengths we will go to to deflect and avoid, from the woman who walks past the family on the street with the sign reading unemployed, to stripping away people of their rights because your God said, and people shooting people, not thinking of the futures they had ahead, each not thinking of the next so enveloped in their own mind that they forget their brother struggling on the other side. After all, it is a trait of mankind, but why are the children of Uvalde the sacrifice for our compromise unheard? To our new generation, pay attention, for change is the anthem of salvation. Destroy your, inher destroy your inheritance of violence, Embrace a new design. The world cannot linger in the stagnant pool of devastation. This is why I leave with you today one last festering question. Will you choose to heal and stop the spewage of blames infection? Thank you. That, ladies and gentlemen, was Brainy Akpa with a heritage in harmony. And now, the Honorable Will Gerondo, the Honorable Nat Natalie Fanny Gonzalez, and the Honorable Kristen Mink. Good afternoon. Happy Martin Luther King Day. Dr. King said, we must remember that intelligence is not enough. Intelligence plus character, that is the goal of true education. The complete education gives one not only the power of concentration, but worthy objectives upon which to concentrate. It seems to me that education has a twofold function, Dr. King continued to perform in the life of man and in society. The one is utility and the other is culture. Education must enable a man to become more efficient, to achieve with increasing facility the legitimate goals of his life. We value greatly the pursuit of academic excellence, but it is more often controversial to learn about each other, our history, our culture, our essence. Are we missing the mark? Dr. King stated, education must also train one for quick, resolute, and effective thinking. To think incisively and to think for oneself is very difficult. We're prone to let our mental life become invaded by legions of half-truth, prejudice, and propaganda. At this point, I often wonder whether or not education is fulfilling its purpose. Even the press, 
the classroom, the platform, and the pulpit in many instances do not give us objective and unbiased truth. To save men from the morass of propaganda, in my opinion, is one of the chief aims of education. Education must enable one to sift and weigh evidence, to discern the true from the false, the real from the real, and the facts from the fiction. The function of education, therefore, is to teach one to think intensively and to think critically. But education which stops with efficiency may prove the greatest menace to society. The most dangerous criminal may be the man gifted with reason but with no morals. Change does not roll in on the wheels of inevitability but comes through continuous struggle. And so, we must straighten our backs and work for our freedom. A man can't ride you unless your back is bent. Only through an inner spiritual transformation do we gain the strength to fight vigorously the evils of the world in a humble and loving spirit. Pity may represent little more than the impersonal concern which prompts the mailing of a check. But true sympathy is the personal concern which demands the giving of one's soul. So where do we go from here? We, you, choose education and transformation. That's what Dr. King would want of us. God bless you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Imagine by cellist Ellen Gira. Imagine there's no heaven It's easy if you try No hell below us Above us all these skies Imagine all the people Living for today uh -huh. Imagine there's no countries it isn't hard to do Nothing to kill or die for And no religion too Imagine all the people Living life in peace You You may say I'm a dreamer But I'm not the only one I hope someday you'll join us And the world will be as one Imagine no possessions I wonder if you can No need for greed or hunger A brotherhood of man Imagine all the people Sharing all the words you You may say I'm a dreamer But 
but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us, and the world will be as one. You may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us, and the world will be as one. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Council Vice President Kate Stewart and Council Member Lori Ann Sales. Dr. King said, we must forever conduct our struggle on the high plane of dignity and discipline. We must not allow our creative protest to degenerate into physical violence. Whenever you are engaged in work that serves humanity and is for the building of humanity, it has dignity and it has worth. There is nothing more majestic than the determined courage of individuals willing to suffer and sacrifice for their freedom and dignity. No work is insignificant. All labor that uplifts humanity has dignity and importance and should be undertaken with painstaking excellence. Whatever your life's work, do it well. Dr. King stated further, I have the audacity to believe that people everywhere can have three meals a day for their bodies, education, and culture of their minds, and dignity, equality, and freedom for their spirits. I believe that what self-centered men have torn down, men other-centered can build up. I still believe that one day mankind will bow before the altars of God and be crowned triumphant over war and bloodshed and nonviolent redemptive goodwill will proclaim the rule of the land. It is better to be the recipient of violence than the inflictor of it. Since the latter only multiplies the existence of violence and bitterness in the universe, while the former may develop a sense of shame in the opponent and thereby bring about a transformation and change of heart. Where do we go from here? We choose dignity, we choose respect. Thank you. Please welcome Glory Star Children's Chorus Chamber Girls Choir followed by the national recording artist, Roland Gresham.
Please welcome Council Member Sydney Katz. That plaque outside the room where King stayed the night before he was assassinated, it reads, Behold, here cometh the dreamer. Let us slay him and see what becomes of his dream. They chose violence. Dr. King chose peace. Peaceful protests, peace through religious beliefs, violating a person's right is the willful attempt to interfere with a person's basic human rights, which include the right to life, liberty, and property. Dr. King said, violence is immoral because it thrives on hatred rather than love. It destroys community and makes brotherhood impossible. It leaves society in a monologue rather than dialogue. Violence ends by defeating itself. It creates bitterness in the survivors and brutality in the destroyers. Dr. King said, I feel that nonviolence is really the only way that we can follow because violence is just so self-defeating. A riot ends up creating many more problems for the Negro community than it solved. We can, through violence, burn down a building, but we can't establish justice. You can murder a murderer, but you can't murder through violence. You can murder a hater, but you can't murder hate. And what we're trying to get rid of is hate, injustice, and all of these other things that continue the long night of man's inhumanity to man.
big round of applause for the Act Act Mcdova Ballet Academy. Now please welcome back County Executive Mark Elrich and County Council President Andrew Friedson with a special presentation for the three-time Grammy Award nominated ensemble, Sweet Honey in the Rock. So we're going to split read up. Oh, there's the microphone. <laughs> so Andrew and I will repeat our previous act. Uh, this is a proclamation from Montgomery County, Maryland. Whereas Sweet Honey in the Rock was founded in 1973 by Dr. Bernice Johnson Reagan as an all-female a cappella group as part of DC Black Repertory Company with Carol Malliard. Is that Matt right? Mailyard? You can um, say it that way. It's okay. okay, Luis Robinson and me. Or me? Mayi. 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 And whereas Sweet Honey in the Rock has continued to involve its dynamic and soul stirring musical talents through over 30 different female artists while maintaining the five part harmonies, spoken word, and signed interpretation for over 50 years. And Whereas Sweet Honey in the Rock is a three-time Grammy Award-nominated musical group which has recorded 24 albums and has performed for presidents, kings, queens, world leaders, and audiences from Africa to Australia on almost every continent and... Whereas Sweet Honey in the Rock, through their melodious voices and lyrical excellence, carry the message of equality, empowerment, education, peace, love, solidarity, and non-denominational spirituality, and... Whereas Sweet Honey in the Rock has begun its three-year celebration to honor its storied past and set the course for the future, and... Whereas several members of Sweet Honey in the Rock are our neighbors and make their home right here in Montgomery County, Maryland. Louise Robinson, Natanju Balade Castle, Aisha Khalil, Barbara Hunt, and Katia Stead. Thank you for choosing our home to be your home. And now, now therefore, do we, Mark Elrich as County Executive and Andrew Friedson as Council President of Montgomery County, Maryland, hereby proclaim Sweet Honey in the Rock Day here in Montgomery County. And we urge all of our residents to congratulate and salute Sweet Honey in the Rock on their 50th anniversary and add our sincere well wishes for their future service to the world through their gifts of music, spoken word, and, sign and singing interpretation signed by Mark Elrich as County Executive and myself as Council President. sometimes when you are on the stage or on a plane or backstage and you're getting ready and you're tired, you wonder if 
the work that you're doing matters. So we just want to say thank you so much. In behalf of 29 women who have taken the stage to make sure that Sweet Honey and The Rock can stay in this world. We thank you. We thank Montgomery County. Special thanks to Mr. James Stowe who facilitated this. And to all of you who always come to see about us. Thank you. Can we have a microphone on for Carol? Is yours on? Checking. Mm -hmm. Microphone number one is not on. Hello. Oh, hello. Uh, I just want you to know that this song that we're going to do was one of the anthems from early civil rights movement. It's called We'll Never Turn Off. Mm. Little, little feet. Let's move back a bit. feedback. <clears throat>
We've been talked about, so sure is your boy. Let's work together. Let's work together. Don't care. Don't care how long it takes. We've come. We've come this way before. And we're moving. Moving on. Moving. Moving on. We may be rough. We may be long. We got to keep on keeping on. Marching over. We're marching over. Don't care. Don't care how long it takes. We have come. We've come this way before. And we're moving. Moving on. Moving. Moving on. Moving. God bless you. Get home safely. Thank you. Please welcome the Honorable Marilyn Balcom and Gabe Albernaz. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming. Dr. King said, men often hate each other because they fear each other. They fear each other because they don't know each other. They don't know each other because they cannot communicate. They cannot communicate because they are separated. We must focus on coming together and working together as many of you know, Montgomery County is a collection of many different communities, cultures, religious beliefs, traditions, and values. We share, however, a common aspiration to effectively utilize our resources to do all we can to ensure that no one is left behind, no one is hungry or lacking. We believe in the ideal to love thy neighbor as Dr. King has so often talked about. Building the beloved community and realizing that we all need someone to lean on. Many theologians have written about the beloved community and suggest that in the beloved community, poverty, hunger, and homelessness will not be tolerated. Racism of all forms of discrimination, bigotry, and prejudice will be replaced by an all-inclusive spirit of brotherhood and sisterhood. The beloved community has at least four central characteristics. The first is justice. King believed that the pursuit of justice was not merely for African Americans. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere, King proclaimed. The second characteristic is freedom. Dr. King believed that oppression and bondage not only limited the persons being oppressed, but also held captive those who perpetuated such acts of oppression and violence. A third component of the beloved community is equality. We are born with self-worth and inherent dignity. As a man of God, Dr. King believed we are all made in the image, in, in the imago dei, we believe we see the image of God in each other. And as such, the final characteristic of the beloved community is love. Love gives the courage to advocate for the voiceless. Love has courage. It's active. It's persistent in the cause to vindicate the wrong, the overlooked, the left out, and the least of us. In Montgomery County, we have not yet achieved the beloved community. We have a ways to go. But we believe we have the roadmap, and we pledge to work harder to stay on track. Where do we go from here? We choose community. We choose inclusion. And now, a celebration of community, culture, 
and Dr. King featuring a performance by the nurse of salsa, Isis La Enfermera, followed by former lead singer of the Ohio Players, Apostle Ronnie Diamond Hoard. Hey everybody, get up from your seats, let's unite in music, get those hands together, uniting for a future, it is together, I see, come on Lisa, come on now, Para entender el camino y para qué llorar, para qué si duele una pena se olvida y para qué sufrir, para qué si así es la vida hay que vivirla. La 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 la, voy a reír, voy a the King Jr.'s birthday, united as a community for a better future. Seguido! Con quien? Con Isi! La enfermera! Voy a reír, voy a pa' que llorar, pa' que sufrir, empieza a soñar a reír. Siente, baila en goza, que la vida es una sola. Voy a reír, siente, vive, siempre para adelante, no mires para atrás. Eso mirate. If you're in the chorus, sing along. Voy a reír, voy a bailar, vivir mi vida, la, 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 la. Voy a reír, voy a gozar, vivir mi vida, la, 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 la. Mi gente, let's keep getting those claps together as we wait for the band to come on stage. ¿Cómo dice aquí? Voy a reír, voy a bailar, vivir mi vida, la, 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 la. Voy a reír, voy a gozar, vivir mi vida. All right, guys, here we go. Voy a reír, voy a bailar, vivir mi vida, la, 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 la. Voy a reír. Voy a go 
gozar, vivir mi vida. Eso es, voy a reír, voy a bailar, vivir mi vida. La, 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 voy a reír, voy a gozar, vivir mi vida. La, 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 la. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. Gracias. Listen, wake up, everybody, no more sleeping in bed. I want to do that part again. Wake up, everybody, no more sleeping in bed. No more back thinking, time to look ahead. The world has changed so very much from what it used to be. There is so much hatred, war, and poverty. Listen, wake up all the teachers, time to teach a new way. Maybe then they'll listen to what you have to say. They're the ones who's coming up the world is in their hand we should teach our children the very best we can yeah. the world won't get no better if we just let it be so much ladies and gentlemen thank you for being here tonight uh, we want to just a quick thank you to all the folks who participated in tonight's program uh, thank you for braving the weather to be here with us as well but please please help me just again salute these persons I want to start with a person who put this together for us from a production standpoint Kimberly uh, Hodges please come out and take a bow please Kimberly Hodges And folks, again, a round of applause for sweet 
Honey Rock. Also, let's thank again recording artist Roland Gresham. And my friends, he has his CDs on sale right outside the door. Go by and get and again to support him. His CDs are right outside the door, so please go by and support him once the program is over. So thank you, Roland Gresham. He came in from Huntsville, Alabama. So thank you for being here. Ronnie Diamond Horde and company, thank you. Let's also give a round of applause for our AXO students. Come on out, AXO students. NAACP AXO program. Come on out. We want to also thank Miss Ellen Guerra. Ellen, you're still here? Come on out, Ellen, if you're still here with us. There she is, all right. <laughs> Isa, come on out again. Isa, come on out. Thank you. <laughs> Akamadola Ballet Academy, come on out, ladies. I gotta say here for my friends, I'm just meeting, uh, did they not absolutely sing beautiful? Maria Chu with her group from, let me get this together here, get this exactly correct, uh, from the Glory Star Children's Choir, the Chamber Girls Choir. Come on out, ladies. I think I've included everybody. Also, every member of our county council was here today as well, county executive as well. I want to thank them also, uh, and all the members of the Strathmore staff. Outstanding, outstanding, outstanding. Thank you all very, very much. And also, my good friend, I'm just learning her, and she does a marvelous job sharing with us the native peoples Again, prayer. Hope Kadu, thank you so much. Hope, where are you? And we cannot end this program without again thanking the lovely voice of our narrator, Selena Mindy Singleton. Come on out, Selena. All right, I think I've got everybody, I believe. And to my friend, Ronnie Diamond Hall, you know what time it is. What time is it? It's time to celebrate. Celebrate! Let's go, let's go. Happy birthday! Come on, say happy birthday, Martin. What? You know it doesn't make much sense hey. There ought to be a law against Anyone who takes offense In a day of celebration We all know in our minds That there ought to be a time That we should set aside how much we love you, I'm sure you will agree What could fit more perfectly than to have a work party The day you come to me, happy birthday to you Oh! 
Montgomery County, we have choices. Let's choose to be a better community. Happy birthday, Dr. King, and happy birthday, Montgomery County.